<clears throat> Hello and welcome. My name is Carl. I'm Two Echo Zero Echo Zulu Tango, and this in this video, it's only going to be a short one. Uh, I'm just going to reflect on this idea that amateur radio can be used in emergencies. What I mean by that is we we hear quite a lot about radio being used in grid down situations. Um, but in, in many cases, especially in the UK, there isn't really a structure to, for what to do if there is such an emergency. If a zombie apocalypse happens, what do you do? Do you, do you drive up to the hills and just call each other? Yeah, I don't think so. However, in the next couple of weeks, there's an exercise going on as part of the Raynet, Raynet UK. And Raynet's this, um, they support other services. Um, doing emergencies, mostly doing uh, radio support through things like marathons and um, cycle rides, all that kind of stuff. They also provide a piece in the jigsaw of emergency planning. So there's an exercise happening, and I'm a member of Raynet, and I, was, I, I, I decided to join Raynet well, eight months ago, just before the pandemic really kicked in, just before the lockdown happened. So nothing's ever happened. I've, 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 there's nothing. <coughs> there's nothing I've been involved in as yet. And I must admit, Raynet is slightly more Dad's Army than it is International Rescue. But I still feel that they still have a, a valuable part to play <coughs> in emergency planning. So in this video, I'm just going to talk about this exercise that's coming up and just talk through some of my thinking, my sort of response to that planning and some of the equipment that I'm going to use as well. So hopefully in about three or four minutes, I'll be able to just justify the equipment that I'm bringing, my a plan for the this uh, scenario, this rehearsal that we're doing in a couple of weeks. So according to the, the instructions, and the the aim of this rehearsal is just to get a number of operators to um if there's a power outage a significant one not just like an hour a, a day or a couple of days they would um basically run their radios from battery power some operators would operate from home on battery some would jump in the car and i, I volunteer to be one that jumps in the car and sets up a portable station I just felt that it just it just fitted the way that I like to operate radio anyway. I'm, I'm a little bit more <laughs> sort mostly prepared for doing portable radio by grabbing and going. So um, <clears throat> I've driven to a place that we've been quite a few times now. And the, the idea would be to get here, I would set up a Slim Jim on a pole. But I've also got a a two and seventy sems mobile antenna on the car anyway. Um, <clears throat> I've brought with me the I brought with me the R Finder B1, which I can plug it directly into the antenna. Inside the car, I've already got a FT7900, which is attached to a battery in the boot. Uh, that will give me a, a day's worth of power. Um, mostly monitoring and just calling in but I've also brought with me um, one of my first radios it's the Yaesu FT2800 lovely radio um, so that is inside the weatherproof box as well and I've also brought with me let me just pull this over uh, I brought with me this is the power bank system and this is the system that um, I can keep charged using the solar panel. So between the battery in the car itself, I could plug a radio into the into the main battery on the car. I've got a big leisure battery in the boot anyway that's mostly fully charged. And then I've also got the power bank and solar panel. So I've got enough battery to keep me going. What I haven't got is a flask of tea that can last 12 hours, so that's another thing I'll need to consider. So from a, from a power point of view, I can quite easily get out and run a radio um, quite easily. Now the aim of the exercise really is to to do a coverage map 
of the Staffordshire area where we live. So with all the operators, they will call into a, be like a net controller that will go around and allocate a specific number to each of the operators and then each each one in turn will will call in the signal um, and you know radio signal report and vice versa and that way we get an idea of, of what coverage we can get from two controllers i've i've actually um added a bunch of simplex channels so um we can quite easily get onto simplex oh what radio is it by the way Yep, at G6 TMO, 2E0EZT, it's a R Finder B1. I, I mentioned, um, I introduced it in, in, the, in the past couple of videos. It's a handheld, uh, it's a, it's a dual band DMR and sort of FM radio, but it's also a mobile phone. It's waterproof, it's quite rugged. Yeah, take care, David. Uh, Mike 7, Oscar Mike Tango, portable one, station call. Uh, two Echo Zero, Echo Zulu Tango. Uh, two Echo Zero, X-Ray, uh, I didn't catch mobile. Yeah, hello, Matthias. Two Echo Zero, Italy, X-Ray, Mexico, mobile, QSL. That's quite uh, close. QSL, yeah. two Echo Zero, uh, Italy, so, uh, X-Ray, uh, mm. Mike, mobile. Uh, the FT2800, uh, lovely radio, still working perfect. The Slim Jim, perfect, lovely. Or always grand. The location is is decent. Uh, I could go to a place called Park Hall and use that, but the problem with that is when it gets to night time, it's like dogging central. So I really don't want to risk uh, parking up there. So this is sort of next best thing, I think. But uh, it's worked for me. I'm going to um, take down the station now and uh, we can get a drink of water or something. Um, parched here so uh thanks for watching thanks for watching all the video as well and uh look forward to the next one so bye bye for now